Do the Sussexes deserve accountability and an apology from King Charles and Prince William over Megxit? Email me down at gbnews.uk, vote in our poll at GB News, but going head to head on this now, Harry's biographer, Angela Levin, once close to the Duke, and the author and broadcaster, Nikki Hodgson. Angela Levin, uh, can you believe that Harry thinks Charles owes him an apology? Surely it should be the other way around. Yes, of course it is. I think this is a whole setup that he's been working on for years, actually. But let me first of all correct the thing about his home there. He lived there on his own before Meghan joined him. He wanted her to join him very quickly. So that's why it was small. And they then had one and a half million pounds spent on one of the flats in the palace with umpteen bedrooms that they would move into. But when it was all ready, they decided they didn't want to live there. So they moved away from that. So it wasn't poor them. They're in the sort of lowest of the low within the palace. It was just, you know, he wanted her to be with him as soon as possible. So they just, she said it was lovely. She said they made chicken and they were so cozy. It was very nice. So they just changed what they feel about things. But this one, I think um, we got hints in the first set of three um programs you saw last week where he said he no longer believes in a hierarchy i think that's one red light danger here the next one he said that um I, megan and i could do it much better than william and my father so that's another red light he wants to smash them and i think it needs to be taken very seriously because there can be one lunatic who feels i like harry i like megan let's see what i can do to help them very, and of course very di davies the former royal protection officer has warned of the potential security risks uh being added uh, to the serving royal family as a result of this netflix documentary uh nikki hodgson you do, do you think Harry and Meghan d deserve an apology? I don't think he's actually saying that he deserves an apology. I think what he was saying in kind of therapy speak, because, you know, he is very coded in that now, is that he has made peace with the fact that they are not going to agree on this matter and therefore is trying to move on, apart from having made this huge documentary. Look, I am not the biggest fan of Meghan, for sure, but I feel very sorry for Harry because he, he carries a very heavy psychological burden from what happened to his mother. And I think what is damning is the fact that the royal family allowed for there to be another woman in the royal family who was an outsider that came in that was substantially bullied by the press, potentially by people inside, and they didn't do enough to protect her. Sorry, Nikki, really I'm going to interrupt you there. I'll let you come back. But where is the evidence that she was bullied? Well, the evidence from the, the the cover, the coverage, the general coverage down in the tabloids, you know. Did, the did we, sorry, did you did you not see the front page after front page when the wedding took place? Well, I just don't want you to misrepresent. There was, a, there was a clear there was a clear point in which the tone of the coverage changed, and that's when people became aware that she wasn't just going to do the bidding of the royal family. The coverage of her when she was pregnant, always criticizing her, touching a bump, eating avocados, doing all these dangerous things, you know. When you compare that to the coverage of Kate, it's nowhere near the same. Rubbish. It was obviously just prejudice against her. And Angela then, you know, Levin, do, do you buy this? There was a picture of baby Archie in a christening gown, and then they went to the factory in India and found out where it had been sweatshopped. You know, it was absolute digging to stitch them up as deranged. Angela Levin. What is very, what is very interesting that I was invited to um, now King Charles's 70th birthday. It happened on the third day after Harry and Meghan got married. And one of the A's rang me and said they weren't coming, but they phoned up to say, can they come? We thought, great. And Harry said to her and to his father, we won't stay very long. We don't want to take all the limelight from you. Let us just come and we'll see a few people and wish you well. Anyway, he came. He made a lovely speech, Harry, saying at last he's understood his father and they're really good pals again. Um, and then uh, I was standing right, right next to them. And he came up and he said um, to Camilla, um, we're going to go now. Um, let you get on with it. Kiss, 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 cuddle, cuddle, cuddle. Off they went. And that was used as a thing when everything changed. They said they were thrown out 
It's been going on for years. Nobody was thrown out. I was standing there. It's an absolute biggest lie you could have made. Um, and, and that's what they do. They take something and they muddle it around and you come yeah. out with something entirely yeah. different. Absolutely. Because, Nikki Hodgson, I just have to be very clear that there was virtually universal positive coverage of Harry and Meghan for a very long time, even after the marriage, even though lots was going on behind the scenes of the royal family, Meghan and Kate falling out, for example, the Queen warning Harry about Meghan's behaviour. But the public was very disturbed by the way she treated her own father, who she threw under a bus and now pretend doesn't exist, uh, was very concerned about her hypocrisy, lecturing us about climate change while taking private jets all around the world. And also, the public, quite rightly, was very concerned about the way staff kept CV seeming to leave Nikki. And we now know there are numerous bullying charges against her. So I just don't buy your thesis, Nikki. I know you can pull out one or two articles that were on particular websites, but on the whole, the coverage of Meghan was very positive until her behaviour was exposed. At the be actually, quite early on, Dan, a very important newspaper, which you are well acquainted with, ran the headline about Meghan being straight out of Compton. What's wrong with that? Racist. It's How? extremely racist. How? How? It's extremely racist. How? It's a it's suburb five miles trope. from where she lives. I know exactly where it is. It's playing on the trope of her being somehow, you know, part of rap culture because she's half black. They also was, spoke was, about they also spoke about how her father's side of the family had Essex roots. I guess the difference between me and you, Nikki, is I don't look for racism. That, they in didn't everything. run that as a headline, Dan. They didn't run that as a headline, did they? They didn't run the headline. But what about they, all of these positive headlines? What about all of so, these positive headlines? Because I, I said that I acknowledged that when we talked about this a minute ago. Of course, at the beginning, the press was positive, overwhelmingly positive towards them. I didn't say that. What I said is that the tone changed quickly when they realised that Meghan wasn't going yeah. to tone I just find it absolutely hilarious that allies of Harry and Meghan and Harry and Meghan themselves expect to have 100% universal positive coverage. And if there's even 5% negative coverage, Angela, it's obviously because we're all racist. But what about these front pages, Angela? Yes, it's all nonsense. What I can't understand is why don't they move on? They must have this real urge and passion to kill off the royal family. I don't mean kill them directly, but I mean to get rid of them. They've got to get their own back. They, you know, we saw in the um, docu series the beautiful place they live. They've got their own beach. They've got all these wonderful things. Two sweet little children, and yet they're both absolutely determined. I think Megan's fed up and I think she w feels that she didn't know what was going on about the hierarchy because most of these things she pretends she'd never heard of, she doesn't know. Um, and, and that she's very, very angry with Harry that he didn't actually let her know that she could be on a level with William or on a level with the Queen and the Queen would accept all her wonderful ideas and that's eating her away. Um, but she's got to get over it because we're not interested in that. Not one bit. OK, thank you so much to Angela Levin and Nikki Hodgson. Who do you agree with? Do the Sussexes deserve accountability and an apology from King Charles and Prince William over Megxit, as Prince Harry suggests? Wendy on Twitter writes, having watched the entire documentary, my thoughts about these two have completely changed. They were set up and hounded. The press have a lot to answer for. Ian says, if they had admitted where they also went wrong, then maybe I would listen. You can't just blame the other side. Their story needs balance. And from Matt, if anything, the Sussexes should be apologising, not being apologised to. They're really beginning to scrape the bottom of the barrel and they should frankly clear off. And your verdict is now in. Just 8% of you agree that the Sussexes deserve accountability and an apology from King Charles or Prince William. 92% of you say that Charles and William should tell them to shove it. But coming up,